see your pretty face george can you hear hey, me hey i can hear you can you hear me <laughs> well this see see this is this would be nice george is a pro he's he's already got all the equipment and the microphones and the setup and like everything that a pro needs because look what at he you does. you got the pro uh mic too that's pretty we, impressive we, we do well we had you know we'd started doing this from the tour bus and uh oh, we wow. had, a, had a mobile rig you're looking at josh he's our bass player and you're looking at Bobby Keith, he's been he does everything. Hey, he's fellas, done everything, and then and we got yeah. Seth. He's our engineer. Um, he he's out, coming out of Nashville, but we started doing this mobily. Um, we bought a little rig, and we were doing it on tour. We were doing it in the tour bus, or we were doing it backstage, wherever, just talking with people we were on tour with. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, this year plans were curtailed for. For obvious reasons. Yeah. And, uh, so we had to figure out a way to to do it from the houses. So we were able to incorporate most i didn't really have to buy anything else to do it from the house we had already purchased it but i had to have the guys come help me set it up and how are you doing i'm doing good man how about you first day back at work today yeah for three weeks so. yeah that's kind of it's kind of how we're feeling man i'm you know we're, we've been off we haven't we haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks and this is yeah. about as much work as we've been doing so <laughs> it's, it's good to get back though so now are you still um are you are you working from home no, we actually go to, um, Gordo's got a property that we refer to as the bunker. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple of days when I have worked from home and like cowboy pregames and things like that. But yeah, we just go to kind of a neutral location and we're in like this big room and, you know, we're 20 feet apart and everything. So cool. Uh, that way we don't, some of the guys are still going up to the station though, um, like Bob and Corby. Um, but I don't know. That's just, we've also had a couple of guys come down with it too. We've had three or four guys who've had it. So, well, yeah. I mean, uh, Jake got it. And then, yeah. Uh, Dan. Yeah. And then Dan. Monty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monty Mayor Justin. got it. Yeah. yeah. So, man, I'm a chicken. I, I am just, I don't know. <laughs> it scares the ever living crap out of me. <laughs> I know. I'll yeah. be in line for the vaccine as soon as I can get it. I mean, I'm just, yeah. uh, I'm scared to death of it. But, yeah. Yeah. We just had a guy in my town. Um, his daughter went to school with my son, uh, died over the weekend, just in his 40s, just two mm -hmm. days, just out of nowhere. It's terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rebecca's uncle's been in ICU since Christmas Eve, man. So, oh, man. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's it's still loud and proud, man. We just got to yeah. be careful. I know. It's kind of one of the first things you talk about, but we'll uh, we'll move on. It looks like everybody's got a good connection and, uh, and happy faces and, <laughs> and ready to go. And... Uh, you're listening to A Couple In with me, Cody Jenks. You're listening to uh, Josh Thompson coming out of Boyd, Texas. Hi, Josh. Hey, bud. And uh, coming out of Waco, Texas, Bobby Keith. No, you're, you're not out of Waco today. You're in, you're in Austin. At, at the house you built, sir. You're at, you're at the house Cody Jenks built. He's, you're at our <laughs> offices in, uh, in Austin, Texas, coming to us live. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Doing well. And Seth knows Noseworthy actually at home today in his in his uh, cave, uh, turning the knobs for us. Our special guest, man, a guy that personally I've been listening to since I was 19 and I'm now 40. Wow. So <laughs> that should make you feel, uh, that should make you feel not older, but maybe more. You just, you know. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. feel old every day. So I'm, that's, I'm telling you, man. that's actually, that makes me feel a little bit better. You're actually closer in age to me than I thought. I think, so, uh, I think, I think you've got, you've got about 15 years on me. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's about right. Yeah. yeah I think I'm I 55. Think so yeah. But our special guest today from, uh, 1310, 96, seven, uh, the ticket, uh, Mr. George Dunham and howdy, uh, howdy. man, we've been excited about having you. We like to have all kinds of different people and just talk shop. That's awesome. You have, like I said, I've been listening to you for over 20 years, mostly whenever my children were young and I had to get up early. Yeah. But uh, now that I'm on a normal people's <laughs> schedule because I'm not on the road, uh, I've been catching you a whole lot more. Host of the Dunham and Miller Show. Man, just uh, we've gotten to know each other over the, over the last few years and, and uh, work together doing some charity stuff. And, and yeah. uh, man, just uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. 
No, oh, thank you. Actually, afternoons are, are really good for me. It's a weird life being a talk show host, kind of like a musician. People don't think you really work, but you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the afternoons are, are, are pretty clear. So this is great for me. And I've, you know, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, both by general weight and uh, just love for what you do and, and how you write and, and what you stand for. And, you know, I've always been a huge fan of you. And the oh, guys. thank you so much, man. Yeah. And other than than being a, a well, like you're okay. You're a home. You're a homie. Um, <laughs> you, you are a, you're a local guy, man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so often a lot of the people that we've met and come to know and, and done these, these, we don't, we don't call them interviews or it's more of a BS session than anything. Sure. But, um, not a lot of people from around home. You, I'm calling Fort Worth, Dallas area home, you mm-hmm. know, uh, that you, you're a graduate of RL Turner, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, in fact, when I was a senior, uh, Vanilla Ice was a freshman. Robbie Van Winkle was a freshman. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't really grow up on the mean streets of Miami, did he? No, more Josie Lane <laughs> than, <laughs> uh, than Miami. Yeah. I did not know him. And then someone mentioned when he got an ice baby came out, uh, someone said, hey, we went to high school with him. And sure enough, went to my senior yearbook and there he is, Robbie Van Winkle, a freshman yeah. when I was a senior. A friend of mine growing up taught him at one point. Okay. So I was thinking he had a parent in education, but I was getting my stories mixed up. I, my friend was in, his parent was in education. He ended, he taught him and I was like, he wasn't from Miami? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's the whitest dude ever. Yeah. No, that's about it. And uh, Andrew McGee, R.L. Turner, Bill Montgomery, who played um, quarterback for Arkansas in the shootout. He was from R.L. Turner. Keith Moreland, mm-hmm. Chicago Cub. Um, that's about it, though. Hey, that's that's a pretty good roster. <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad, man. That's some, and then uh, you went on to uh, to go to college. You attended the University of North Texas. Now we had a, a former North Texas alum too. We had Stone called Steve Austin on uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, we were in uh, school at the same time. Y'all were there at the same time. Yeah, I knew him as Steve Williams. Yeah, a yeah. uh, defensive end and a really good defensive end mm-hmm. on some really good North Texas defenses um, mm-hmm. in the eighties. And I remember. Our kind of our mentor at North Texas was Bill Mercer, who did wrestling in Dallas for years and years. And I remember him asking Bill questions about wrestling, you know, and, and what it was like. And I think Bill actually helped get him his start here locally. And then, you know, of course, he went huge. Yeah. He speaks fondly of his time up there. You know, he, he's a South Texas boy, but, you know, we've spent a lot of time up there as well. My, my wife went to school down the street at Texas Woman's and uh, yeah. And we lived, we lived in Denton there, not too terribly far from, from where you live, you know, for a number of years and yeah. really loved it, man. And we drove through Denton the day before yesterday. Okay. In the three years that I've been gone. It's changed, hasn't it? It's unbelievable, man. It's, yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's still a really cool town. As they always say, it's a few degrees cooler than Dallas mm-hmm. in Denton. And uh, yeah, what they've done with the town square there is really cool. And uh, Dan Silverleaf, you've played there, right? Um, you know, the I, years? I've, I've been to a ton of shows there and I've actually set in at a show there before. I've never actually been billed there, but I love the room, man. Since they open up, you ought to do like an acoustic show. You're so big now. I don't think, I think you're too big for the place now, but <sighs> I just want to play, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to do an acoustic set there though. That'd be great. Uh, sure. Brent Best, uh, Slobberbone actually works sound there every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Well, speaking of playing, um, Obviously, that's kind of been a, a non-issue. I mean, the Bird Dogs, your band, you know, because a lot of people, you know, know that you do, but some people may may not know. You know, you have your own band and have had for a long time. Yeah, um, started about thirteen years ago or so, and um, outside of a virtual version of our charity event, Jub Jam, that we did, and we did something for the Dallas Stars Foundation. That's all we've done in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty one now. Um, so the last whatever nine months. Um, we obviously don't play as much as, as you guys, but I, I just love it. And, uh, doing the music is, has allowed me to meet people like you and get to know you. And, um, you know, a lot of music, uh, musicians that I've admired through the years. So I really miss it. I miss doing shows and, um, I don't know, maybe three months away, you think a couple months away. <laughs> You know, word around the campfire, uh, as far as what I heard, because I, I kind of get weekly briefings with our management, kind of state of the union where we're at. The big promoters are looking at um, it's starting to sell shows again, maybe in April. Mm-hmm. And if you can start selling shows in April, 
by June or July, hopefully the vaccine is widely accessible. Yeah. And, uh, and we can start putting butts in, in venues again, you know, cause people ask me the same things like you're in the business. What is, and I'm like, man, I know what everybody else knows. And that, that's, you just don't, shit, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, they, they, I don't know. They, you just they, don't. they don't know anything, you know? Well, I feel for you guys, man. Cause I mean, it's your livelihood and, um, you know, outside, have you guys done any like drive-in shows or anything like that to like outdoor venues where everyone's in cars and crap or have no. you not even done that? No, we haven't. We've had some friends do that, and we, we had some friends do, doing the private party thing. A lot of a lot of people were, yeah. you know, um, you know, having get-togethers at their homes and, and having people come out for that. I, I've done one of those, but a lot of my buddies, you know, they've been doing those, and it's tougher. It's it's tougher on on us because we, you know, we had just kind of had a little bit of a rise. We we, we kind of got a little bit bigger um, at the end of last year, and uh, we were playing bigger venues, and yeah. kind of the down. The downfall to that was, you know, going from being a bar band to, you know, playing, you know, bigger places. It, you can't go back to the bars just because there's already bar bands that have taken your place. And you right. know, then then you run into the logistical nightmare of, you know, if we announced that we were going to be at eight airs or something like that, you know, we we'd get a lawsuit. It'd be a madhouse. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, yeah. so it's, you know, telling somebody the other day, man, I just want to go sit on a bar stool in a corner and uh, it just... <laughs> pick for a bunch of people that may or may not be listening like I used to. You know? <laughs> I told you about that place near me. You did. And, and we need and, to do that sometime and just not even announce it, just kind of usher you in. And that would be the way to do go. it. Because yeah. if we announced it, it would, it would turn into be a, a, yeah. a cluster. It but, would. But yeah, pop-up stuff like that is, is definitely fun. And I, I have thought about that and, and uh, we may end up doing something like that. Nobody expected this. You know, my go. other idea is. What's that? For bands like y'all. Why not, speaking of pop-up events, do a Beatles thing and just, so it'd be safe. You can even get like plexiglass to separate you if you wanted to and get on rooftops. That's, that's pretty cool. The people could drive by or drive in and you're just up on the roof. You're not by anybody. <laughs> you're, you're, you're waving, uh, waving any potential lawsuits. Yeah, people, <laughs> right. Yeah. And play as loud as you want, you know? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll organize that way and get the whole band and we'll. I got a few places in mind. We'll get you let's on get the rooftop. The, let's get the band back together, George. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> it's, it's re, it's, we're having a, a full tank of gas and a half pack of cigarettes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we're going we're to get the band. You hear that, boys? Band's getting back together. Oh, you, you got it's it? about time. <laughs> it's about time, right? Yeah, we hadn't played since uh, the end of February. Oh, my gosh. Well, that needs to change, and hopefully it will here before too long. Yeah, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. But, you know, you mentioned it a while ago. You know, it was something that I was glad to be a part of because it's something that I, I deal with uh, are dealing with currently in my life and have dealt with uh, in the past with family members. But tell us a little bit about Jub Jam because you mentioned that and that was a, a highlighted point here. I wanted to make sure we, uh, we yeah. touched on that. Thanks for talking about it. Thanks for doing it a few years ago. And um, yeah, it's just something that I started, um, I guess 2012 was our first year. And I'd done several uh, different uh, events with the senior source of Greater Dallas. And I got involved with them when my parents got sick. And that's now a long time ago. It was more than 20 years ago. Um, my mom had a condition called hydrocephalus, which is uh, a lot like Alzheimer's. She lost her faculties. And um, my dad had a stroke. And, and both of them were basically bedridden for the last year or two of their life. And some of that they spent in facilities, some of that they spent at home. Luckily, my parents had, had saved through the years and they had um, my sister and they had me locally. My other siblings live elsewhere, but we were able to take care of them. I, I felt like they were well cared for. It was sad. It was one of the most difficult things I ever went through. But I, I thought at that time, what about the people that don't have these resources? And that's where the senior source came in. And then that was about the time, but shortly after that is when I started, you know, writing and playing music. I think that that was really a, a starting point for me. I just got very introspective and wanted to write a lot of things out and say a lot of things. And a lot of it was about them and just life. And um, after finding a couple of different ways to raise money for the senior source, I thought, well, what about music? And started doing a yearly event. And the first one we had at Gillies and I think 
maybe a hundred people showed up. I mean, it was really, really small, but um, you know, the year you came down a few years ago and two years ago with Pat Green, uh, we, both of those years, we raised over a hundred thousand dollars and awesome. um, it all went to the senior source and we had a very, as you know, a very low budget. And this is something that I wanted to say about Cody, just the kind of dude he is. Um, uh, you know, here you were really, really starting to to take off and rock it. Number one, you did the show, which you didn't have to do. I would have totally understood if you said, look, I play 200 shows a year. We've known each other for a long time, but I'm going to take that, whatever it was, a Thursday night off. But you came down and did it. And I didn't have a, a lot to offer you, especially with what you are as a musician. And whatever it was that I paid, I can't even remember what the amount was. But Cody tore up the check and I'll never forget that. <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, that was just, I know you probably thought, oh, it's no big deal. It's a Thursday night. We had a really good time. <laughs> we, we, went to the, we went to the Four Corners Brewery, you know, my guitar player is a master brewer at Four Corners and it's always a great time. The musicians always have a really good time, but I've never had anyone do that. So uh, I'm, I'm forever indebted to you for doing no, that. No, that you, awesome. you don't, you don't know me. I mean, I tell you what, you know, I, I value your friendship. You know, you, you've never asked us for nothing and I've asked to be on your show before and you graciously uh, let me. Anytime, anytime. You graciously let me plug when we were out at the, uh, the Verizon center with Christofferson a few years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, but uh, you know, man, it, it's something that, like I said, that right now I'm dealing with personally, you know, and have dealt with, uh, in the years past. So that is definitely a uh, near and dear to my heart as well. So, you know, you need to invite me back out to another one, you know, I know, oh, I know man. This, this year was weird, but you know, if everything yeah. gets back on track uh, for 2021, you know, you'll have to let oh, me know man. what it is. Open invite. I would love to have you come down again. That would be so great. And, uh, well, it's great. Yeah. The bird dogs learn like, like three of my songs. And like, I just that's a lot for us to- too. That's asking a, <laughs> that's a lot for us. <laughs> My guys hate it when I say, hey, let's cover this. Oh, yeah. man, we got to learn something new. Yeah, you got to learn. It's Cody Jinks. Damn yeah. it. Learn the freaking song. We learned, you guys learned them, and I just walked right up on stage and just said, well, this is either going to be real awesome or we're going to have a, a big a, train wreck. Yeah. A big train wreck. We didn't wreck you either. We no, didn't, and, no. And then Brady Black was there from the Randy Rogers band. You guys did. That was awesome, too. And you guys did a, a couple of songs acoustically, which are just beautiful. You yeah. know, well, Josh and Brady went to the same high school uh, out in Plainview. Oh, well, yeah, I, I was really, you know, I actually have this written down, George. Um, you have a an unnatural um, infatuation with, Brett, with Brady. I do, I know. I'm weird about people. Yeah, I do really you have am. any restraining orders against you yet? Not yet. Him? I may have one. Um, I have, there's several people who could come after me. Um, Brady... <laughs> Brady could probably launch some sort of, some, yeah, some sort of protective barrier. Um, Jordan Spieth is another one who I'm just, uh, <laughs> and uh, Casey Musgraves. I say a lot of weird things about her too. So, but I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't know Jordan either. Um, and I certainly don't know Casey, but yeah, Brady and I have become friends, but I think at first he didn't really know what to think. <laughs> Cause he's like, man, I'm just a fiddle player. And I said, no, man, you're more than that. You're a, you're a God. <laughs> Brady's a class act. We've known Brady for a long time and, and obviously playing with Randy over the years and, and getting yeah. getting to know those guys. That is that is really a um lack of a better term. That is, is a lovely group of dudes. Yeah. They, you know, they're they're a pleasure to play with. We always have fun with them. Me and Josh beat that ass playing cornhole. <laughs> oh, we did one time. <laughs> We we got Brady and we got Brady and, and Randy for for a couple hundred bucks playing corn. Nice, and, nice. Uh, then, Love hearing that. And then and then Josh finished cleaning Randy out, playing uh, <laughs> rolling some dice. And Brady looks over and goes, "You might not, you might need to get off the bus now." <laughs> <laughs> you guys have overstayed. You're welcome. Thank yes, you very much. True, very very much. <laughs> what was Brady right. like in high school? You know, him, was it Plainview? Yeah, Plainview. Yeah. You know, Br- Brady was actually a. He and I didn't run in, in the same crowd, uh, but I mean, he, he was always a, a nice guy. And, you know, talk about fiddle playing. You know, he was playing fiddle in, in high school. And I, my favorite story about him is it was his senior year. And they had this thing, you know, it was a big review of, you know, basically a big talent show. Yeah. Uh, that they put on. That was huge and, in high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And here, come, here comes Brady Black. Uh, you hear uh, Devil Went Down to Georgia queue up. 
and Brady Black comes down on a skateboard with spotlight <laughs> on him, playing playing the fiddle part, and then you know just goes up there and plays all of it. I mean, just absolutely killed it. This is you know seventeen years old and he's just slaying it. That, oh that's my actually, God. That, that's what I remember the most about him in, in high school is coming down on a skateboard. I'm glad I didn't see that. See, that would have started my infatuation much earlier. <laughs> Coming on a skateboard and play Devil Went Down oh, to Georgia. Goodness. That's it awesome. It was great. No, but he, he was a great guy. He really, really yeah. was. And, and it's been Such really fun to, yeah. to, you know, actually kind of reconnect, you know, later sure. on down, down in life. And us. Not the, uh, not the. What do we got, Keith? Uh, Iowa. Iowa City. We were playing up there. We had a show. It was it was us and Randy and uh, Donahue, Park, Parker McCollum, I think, and somebody. It's quite a bill. Oh, Shooter Jennings. Yeah, and Shooter Jennings too. Dang. No, I am thinking of the one in South Texas, like San Marcos or San Angelo, where they threw all the beer at us. Oh, you're taking Chili Fest. Chili Fest. Yeah, <laughs> we were we were playing Chili Fest, and and Randy, uh, they went on right before we did, and we were standing on the side of the stage watching the show. And at Chili Fest, they they throw full cans of beer at you, like they'll crack a beer, drink about a drink of it, and then just throw it so it has enough weight to get to the stage. And it's just what they do there. And uh, Brady's up in the middle of a solo. Just people can't see me fiddling. I'm fiddling right now. He's up in the middle <laughs> of a solo, just ripping it. And somebody launches a beer and hits him right in the crotch. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like and just it hit him right in the crotch, and then. He, it kind of spewed everywhere and it got all his pants wet, you know, like looks like he he peed on himself <laughs> and it, right in the middle of a solo. He kind of doubles, it kind of goes like that and then keeps playing his solo. And then he finishes the solo. He turns to us and looks at us and holds his bow and his fiddle out like that. And we could just see the beer right on his crotch rolling down. He just gives a WTF. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a weird thing, isn't it? To throw, so you like the band so much that you're going to peg them with a half full beer. I've that's never understood really it. really odd. Yeah. It's well, just, and Pat, Pat Green had been there. Was it the day before, the week before? The night before. The, day, the night before. And they were throwing beers at him. And he said, he said, miss me, bitches. And <laughs> no, that's no. like the worst thing to say, right? So then it was on. <laughs> but when, when Randy was walking off stage that day, he looks at me and he goes, whatever you do, man. Don't tell them not to throw beer. <laughs> <laughs> they they See, do it too, It's man. awesome. Man, and uh, I, here's another thing that I think is so cool about what you guys do. And I know that becomes a beating night in and night out to deal with drunks and stuff like that. But you, I don't even know if you remember this or not. Maybe we talked about it. Um, I, think, I think we've had this conversation before. But you, uh, you invited us to open for you at 8 Airs. Speaking of 8 Airs, like you did a, uh, a few yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we started as something I said or whatever, but uh, remember a fight started like when we were playing and uh, I thought, man, this is so great. A fight started and we're playing a place where a fight started. We're playing with Cody Jinks. I don't know. I just thought that was a cool moment. That's, and I, I'm glad that you think that's cool because like yeah. you said, I was playing and a fight started. I'm like, well, it's normal if one starts. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it's no big deal to y'all, but yeah. usually we don't have enough people to have a fight you know, where we play. So that was like a really cool thing. And I don't know. I just felt like, yeah, this is, uh, this is awesome. I'll, I'm glad, I'm glad you look back at our, our memory of the first time we, we shared the stage together of a fight starting and that making you. Yeah, I oh, did. It did. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of like what the first time we played together was at a charity event. And uh, in Fort mm -hmm. Worth, that was the first time I met you. Mm -hmm. And it was an acoustic thing. It was me and you and um, uh, Scott they Copeland. Had Scott Copeland. Uh, um, and uh, he, put uh, the, he put that together too, dude, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Evan Felker from Turnpike. Yeah. Jason Bowen was there. I yeah, mean, there, there's like there. some big names. And I got paired up with you. And that was the first time I met you. And when I explained this on the ticket, someone uh, like emailed me, like dog cussed me because he's a big fan of yours and saying, what are you saying? You're better than Cody Jane. No, what I was saying was I was not cool enough to be on the stage. That was my point. I think I said <laughs> I, I was sitting next to Co I was sitting next to Cody, who, you know, I'm sorry, Cody, but you're cool. You're someone sees you on the street, well, that's a that's a cool guy. I'd like to have a conversation with him. That was my point. And I think I said on the ticket, yeah, you know, Cody's next to me, he's got long hair and tattoos, and uh, you know, um and Scott Copeland was up there, and I think he, you know. You know, just gives off that cool vibe, and then there's me. You know, the overweight dad who's up there 
Well, so yeah, it just made no sense to a lot of people that showed up that day. But yeah. you got to give me time to be the overweight dad because now I've I've got my COVID twenty. Look, I don't, I don't have long hair anymore either. Holy George. cow! Look at that. I'm I'm I'm. When did you do it. that? Uh, two nights ago, I let my kids get the trimmers after me. I finally said goodbye, buddy. I I can't I can't grow a complete uh, head of hair anymore. <laughs> Well, that looks cool too. That's I a know, good look right? for you. You yeah. shaved the back too. I, it's it's all gone. All the way. Oh no! Yeah. So I'm man. I'm not as I'm not as cool as I used to be, and I'm. Nah, I'm, you still other, are. My daughter told me the other day I was rocking the dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know the kids, kids, man, they'll, they'll yeah. tell you the truth. But yeah, no, you know, I remember that day, and it was it was a benefit for a guy named Andy Pate that's right. uh, that had had been uh, friends with with Scott Copeland, a, a mutual friend of ours for for a long time, and he was having some health issues, and you know, Scott uh, Scott was able to make some phone calls. Man, he he pulled some names out, dude. I was yeah. kind of kind of impressed, man. Yeah, but that was a fun day, and that was the first day that you and I got to play. And then I remember asking you to play that show at Adair's, and it was really just because, like, you know, I had met you, I liked you, you know, I, I really <laughs> liked uh, the Bird Dog song "Devil in the Well." Yeah, I think that that's a really cool, very well written song. Thank you. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, man, you know, we were we were playing at Adair's, and at that point, we were playing Adair's like three times a month, man. We were more or less kind of like the house band, and, and I remember calling you up and be like, hey, man, you know, can you do this do this show? And you know, I was like. You know, we can pay you fifty bucks. You know, like done. Yeah, <laughs> deal, man. How- <laughs> we usually don't get paid. That sounds that sounds incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it was fifty fifty dollars, man. You know, that's that's what we could afford to give you. You know, I want to say I started that fight because I, I when the fight broke out, we were playing, and I think it was the dude that was pissed at me like beforehand. And he, he wasn't a ticket fan, which that's fine. You don't have to be. Just don't tell me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if someone's not a fan of your music and I mean, I'm sure you get this from time to time. Oh uh, yeah. I've, I play music. What's your name? Cody? Oh yeah. I've heard you. I'm not really a fan. Yeah. People don't say that typically. No, no, they I mean, don't. They, they probably don't. Um, yeah. But you know, we get that from time to time. Oh, I don't listen to you guys. Well, how would you know if I'm any good or not? You know, I really don't like what you do. And, and someone had said that and, you know, kind of was trying to start something. And I think, I think we played that song that night. And right before I played it, I said, because of what the song is about, I, I think that's what got us going on it. And I said, hey, to the guy at the bar, F you, this song's for you. And I think that was the dude that was in, a, that was in the fight just minutes later. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take credit for that fight. That makes it even that much cooler. I was going to say, George, you incited your own fight while you were playing because <laughs> you thought that there were enough people to have a good one. You had to rile them up. And get it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I like my like one dude. chance, guys. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start a fight right here. Watch this. Yeah, hey, <laughs> people don't realize when you behind that microphone, and you you know it because well, you know, he knows it. You oh, live yeah? behind a mic. You can get people to do whatever oh. you want them to do. If you want them, <laughs> if you want, excuse my language. If you want them fighting or fucking, you can do either one. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mainly, people want to fight us. All about you know sports and yeah, goofy we, stuff like that. Gosh, and, and and speaking of which, you know your your station, man. The you you've been a part of that station for twenty five years, twenty six years. Yeah, we're um. I guess we're turning. This is twenty one, so we are about to turn twenty seven years old. Yeah, January ninety four. Yeah, and and your partner. Craig Miller, mm-hmm. uh, you guys were uh, friends in college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Roommates, right? Eventually roommates. We lived across the hall from each other at West Hall, and then uh, we got an apartment together. Yeah. And so, short story long, long story short, you guys ended up uh, getting the Dunham and Miller show. Um, back then, it was just 1310, the ticket. Yeah. You know, and then uh, some years ago, uh, got 96.7, and obviously, that, that's that been a lot better for us uh, living in rural <laughs> areas. <laughs> But, it's all about the stream now, right? The, oh the Sports gosh, Day yeah. app. We are, this is a wild, wild number. We are the most streamed radio station in the world. I don't doubt that a bit. And are you really? Yeah. Wow. It blew I mean, our mind. Uh, we, we got that number like three or four years ago, and it's still, it's even more so now. But only the BBC has um, higher streaming numbers than the ticket worldwide. Incredible. That is, that is a Goliath. That is big. Pretty wild. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's such, what what makes y'all's show, what makes, not just y'all's show, what makes the ticket so special? And like I said, I've been listening since I was 19. What makes the ticket so special is the fact that you guys have been on together so long, all the shows. Yeah. Um, 
you can't you can't put chemistry together like that. It doesn't it doesn't work. Um, that's why you guys have the longevity. That's why you have the Marconis. It's not just. And my wife brought up a point the other day too, because I was talking to her about you being on the show, and I was excited to you know to have you on, and uh, you know because I'm a, I'm a fan of yours as well. You know, my son was you know. excited that I was going to be on the podcast. You're going to be. Why does Cody Jinx want you on his podcast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Because he Why didn't did think you I'm cool either. Charity event. I don't he know. Man. I don't know. He didn't think I'm cool either. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what children. They're they're great at telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah. But what's what's made y'all station so special is that you guys, very much like us in our line of work, people grow attached to you. You become a part of their lives. Yeah. You know, like J- Josh and I. Josh and I are both P1s. We listen all the time when we're on the road. You know, Josh usually has his ear bit, earbuds in. I'm listening to that app, Sports Day app, baby. All the that's time. That's awesome. All, all, all the so time, awesome. you know, we, we tell people about you guys and, um, you know, that in no way, shape or form has anything to do with, you know, being the most streamed uh, station, <laughs> you know, in the world. We I hope you do with. notice that Cody Jinx music gets played on the morning show and uh, yeah. gets in returns and, you know, and I hear from your fans too, like, man, it's so cool. You play Cody Jinx. Of course I play Cody. And even the bits before Mike retired, you know, and Danny and we'd played with Danny whenever Danny was doing, uh, yeah, which part, yeah. Which band was well, it? Which uh, one? The, the country band. Um, King Bucks. King, King Bucks. Bucks. Thank you. Whenever he was doing that, you know, we played a b- happy birthday party for um, eight airs. But oh, was that when they were talking about singing your song when we were running the? Oh yeah, because <laughs> Reiner, Reiner, Mike thought Mike thought it was um, it Thunderheaded Rain. Thunder rain. <laughs> <laughs> and so then then Danny started going Thunderhead Rain. He just started making up words and like I'm driving down the road and, and like I'm laughing. Because I'm like, this is, they're making fun of me. They're making fun of my song. <laughs> oh, no, they did the Vaughn Lane. It was the old Vaughn Lane. My Vaughn Lane. <laughs> kind of like riding on a train. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bunch of jackasses. I'm, I'm um, driving down the road laughing at somebody making fun of my song. And I'm like, this is so, now, like, I feel like I'm a part of the ticket, you know? That's like, awesome. That's, yeah, it's my own special place. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's just like when you hear from somebody who said, hey, that song means something to me, whatever it is, you know, if it, if it helped me through a tough time or if it just, uh, I don't know, somehow they related to it. It's, just, it's the same kind of thing when we hear that when you know people say and especially in the last nine months we've had a lot of really really nice communiques from people saying you know this time has sucked but you've helped me get through it and that you know that's why you do this i can tell you right now the ticket has helped me get through this really Uh, yeah thanks for saying that i appreciate that i know your music has i i mean i listen to you all the time I, i i can definitely say the same thing right back at you guys you know and what you do um, what Rebecca and I were talking about the other day, going going back kind of full circle, I get scatterbrained sometimes, but she said, you need to bring up, because Re- Rebecca is now P1. I, my wife listens, because <laughs> she, she used to aggravate her so bad because there would be a drop, and she was like, what was that? And I'm like, it was, it was a drop, Rebecca. <laughs> like, why, why did he say that? He didn't really say that. He, he said that a long time ago, and they just did it to make him look stupid. You know, so after she started knowing what was drops and like got to know you yeah. guys and your voices and, and all that kind of stuff, she, she got it, you know. Really acquired and, you know, taste, yeah. No absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But she said, she said, you need to bring up, because that there was one day I was driving home. I was, I was strapper fishing on Texoma, mm-hmm. and I'd met some buddies up there, and we were probably two months into this thing. And at the time, Black Lives Matter had really come to a head. And I got home and I said, man, I had to text George, Bob Sturm. Uh, he's another host on a, a different show um, yeah. on the ticket there. Gave this heartfelt, what he's, I, I can't even say what he, it was beautiful. It, yeah. it was, it was completely off the cuff, pouring his soul out. And, and I was sitting in my truck texting it to my wife. I said, you need to turn on the ticket and listen to what Bob, and I, then I texted you. I said, I don't yeah. know if Bob knows me from Adam, but like, tell him, thank you. I did. Yeah. Yeah. For what he's and, and you said that you had gotten like four or five texts already, you know, about what he was talking about. But that's the kind of things that you guys do when you become a part of your life. You know, Rebecca said, you need to bring that up. You need to talk about that, you know, from a listener and from a fan's perspective, because we went 100 and something days without sports. Y'all are a sports station. Yeah. It got real personal real quick because yeah. you got to go to work. Yeah. Whether the material is there or not. And just thank you guys for talking about the hard things to talk about because y'all did. Well, thanks. Yeah. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, a lot of places to go whenever, no. you know, you're kind of like, well, you know, 
life just hit us in the face with a one two blow you know we got a pandemic we're we're in the middle of another you know social injustice movement you know yeah. and you guys had to tackle that stuff and that's hard to talk about it is and you know you always weigh that balance does anyone really care what i think of this you know whether it be you know black lives matter or whether it is what what's your fear of you know, COVID-19 and you'd be surprised at um, some of the negative feedback that we got during some of that. I wouldn't I be surprised at that, all, you know, I just want to, I, I just want to hear sports. What do you guys know? And, yeah. but you got to fight through that, you know, and that's, that's the one thing about our station. You know, I'm sure sometimes we've been disingenuous about something, but at least the way we've always done our show, it's like, just like what you guys do here. It's, it's what's on your mind. A lot of times that is, might McCarthy be a, a bigger derelict when it comes to fourth down or it could be, <laughs> you know, it could be, um, I'm such a wimp, you know, I've broken down on the air before, um, you know, talking about things that are really near and dear to me. And I'm going to tell the story this week and I'm, I've already like pumped myself up to get through it. Uh, at the start of this football season, I was really pessimistic and I, I just love football. My son coaches high school football and I did this segment and I talked to uh, his head coach and I talked to Todd Dodge, who I knew, known for 30 years now from him coaching in high school. And he also coached at North Texas when I was doing the games. And I called these coaches. I said, do you really think this is going to happen? And they said, both of them, they said, yeah, we're going to, we got this plan and we're going to do this and we're going to try to keep our kids safe. And like everyone else that's trying to go to work, we're going to try to do our jobs. And I did that on the day they started uh, fall practice. And I said, so, you know, my son's season starts tonight. <laughs> and man, I just, I pretty much broke down in the air because I, I, was, I was scared about him. You know, I was worried yeah. about him yeah. um, all year long. And the end of the story is they won the state championship. They won 16-0. <laughs> and wow. they fought through all that. Yeah. And it was, I mean, I... Emotional. Yeah, it was really emotional just Absolutely. from, you know, just, I, I just want you, and I told him when, when they won, I said, I'm so proud of you, you know, but I'm also relieved that it's over because mm -hmm. I, I've been worried about you. And here I go again. Well, but, that, uh, but that never goes yeah. away. The, you, you're no. worried about, being worried about your children. No. Even when your children are grown up, I've learned yeah. uh, my mother still. Uh, <laughs> sure. Thank God. Cody, you know, yes. stop hanging around right. all those hippies. Yeah. Are you taking care of yourself? <laughs> Are you, are you sure? You know, but, and that's, and okay. And you hear this kind of this cliche. That's why you play the game. Yeah. Even when it's, and, and it probably means more having won in a year like this. Absolutely. Because yeah. I don't have to tell you, people need sports like they need music. Heck yeah. And I, and I commend them so much high school. You know, everyone's saying, no, the NFL, this, that. Dude, what they have done is pretty remarkable. And you can say it's all in the name of money, and maybe it is, but look how much money they've lost. Yeah. yeah. How, much, how much money did the Giants lose yesterday when they're playing in front of nobody? There's mm -hmm. nobody in the Meadowlands. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what do they generate on a, on a game day? 25 million, 30 million, 50 Absolutely. million, you know? Yeah. And so it's not all. And, and some of it is, hey, this is what we do. It's just like the guy who's, you know, working at a grocery store, you know, he's, He's trying to support his family and that's, and that's what he's doing. And, and that was the cool thing too, is afterwards, you know, and you know this now, Cody, about your kids, you're, you're so happy for them and you're so proud of them and when they going back to when they're really young, they're, they're potty trained. Right. And it's like, wow, you, you can do this now on your own. I'm telling you now, this is your future. That never changes. The night after that state championship game, I stayed up till four o'clock in the morning, just looking at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know, I was so excited for him mm -hmm. and was so happy for him and relieved too, in, in some ways, you know, that the season, uh, it ended that way and, and ended with, as far as I know, everyone being safe. And yeah, that, that never leaves you no matter how old your kids are. And that was one of the cool things of, of the break. We were at the state championship game and I'm a grandfather now. He has a, he has a little son and oh wow. Uh, so we're all at the game and <laughs> He said, uh, you know, he, he told my daughter-in-law, he said, if we win, I don't care how you do it, but somehow get Beckett to the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went down and she's such a sweetheart and she kind of, you know, sweet talked security. And next thing I know, all three of them are down on the field. Nice. And it's, yeah, it's the you best. share that, man. Those, those yeah. moments you, you get yeah. like, dude, you don't, you might not get one of those kind of moments in your life. No. And that's, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. 
you know, when you do have a moment like that, like I remember, you know, Josh, when we played the Ryman for the first time and wow. my kids were there and, and my, uh, my nieces were there and we got done playing and the kids all walked out on stage again. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. <laughs> that's what dads do. We just sit around and just go, God, that's the greatest thing. <laughs> you but turn it, into a big damn baby again, yeah, man. You do. Yeah. But what, I mean, are you okay? Tell me, what was that like? What was the, what was the most nervous part when you walked out or like your first note or halfway through or? Josh and I have been doing this a long, long time together from the smallest stages to the biggest stages. And that was one of the most nervous that first show at the we did two shows at mm -hmm. on that run two two back to back we sell out nights and that first one I was so nervous that I don't remember much of the show the second night I had to remind myself to calm down and enjoy it yeah but yeah man you dude I'm I'm scared to death up there a lot of the times and and you just got to act like you're not you know if you just walk out with a <laughs> cool pair of sunglasses and a cowboy hat and. <laughs> You know, you're walking out. You're kind of like uh, Jimmy Dugan in a league of their own. You know, he walks out and <laughs> doffs his cap, but he's but you're not saying screw you, kiss my ass. You know, you're sitting there walking out like the baddest dude in the room, going holy crap. <laughs> See, isn't that hard though to enjoy the moment? Because like a because be like a like an athlete, you know, who's on the field, they can't necessarily do that as they're playing their craft. Like in my very small experience with music, I would think it. Is it the same because you still got to perform, you know, and as you're looking out, you can get caught up in a moment all of a sudden, crap, what's the next line, you know? Absolutely. Or where yeah. are we in the song or? It happens all the time because you, you get caught up in it and like, you just kind of, I'll, I'll space out up there sometimes. Like I'm sitting there thinking, I can't see that the back of this place. <laughs> And I was like, wow, where are we? I can hear them. And sometimes I'll just go bring the house lights up so I can see those people in the back. And I, they bring the house lights up and I'm like, good God, those people are a long way away. I can hear you, but I can't, you know, and you're sitting there thinking, damn, that's a bunch of, man, I hope I don't forget these. There's 10,000 people here. I got a lot of words to remember. Oh, crap. You know, <laughs> all that shit. Runs was that it? Was head, that like know? the moment where you thought, okay, we have arrived here. That was one of them. The Ryman was there. definitely uh, the first time I played the Ryman, first time I played the Grand Ole Opry. Those were times that very nervous. Like, oh, okay, here's a funny thing about the Opry. Whenever you play there for the first time, they have a notebook that they keep in there and you're supposed to write down something for them to keep. And when you walk into all the dressing rooms at the Opry, there's all these sayings that people had written down. Got invited to play the Opry first time. Had a blast. Thank you all so much. So-and-so. Yeah. And then you look over on this wall and it's a quote from whoever, you know, Dolly Parton or Darius Rucker or, or whoever, you know, and you're just looking at these walls going, man, this is what this person was thinking whenever, you know, they got to, uh, they got to come play the Opry. You know what I wrote on mine? Hmm. Holy shit. They invited me to play the Opry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're going to put that on you any said of the wall. What all of those people were thinking <laughs> that's, probably that's exactly the first right, time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was that was what I, that was the first they didn't thing have I the could guts think. to say it though. You know, like they invited me. <laughs> really? Okay, that's so and awesome. They only man. invited me because Clint Black asked them to, though, because I I did a I did a song with him. Whoa! And and then uh, he he asked, I don't think I would have gotten in had it not been for uh, for Clint. But dang! But yeah, man, it was uh, it, it's those little moments, like you know, like when my kids walked out on the stage. Yeah. You know, like like your family when your son won the won the state championship, and you know that's why you play the game. That's why yeah. you sing the songs. That's that's why you go to work. You know, Amen. You, you don't get those moments very often. No, no. And I told him that afterwards too. I said, you know, you may win five more of these. I don't know. You know, someday you may be a head coach and win one. You may win. You be you may be the next Todd Dodge, but you may never get back. You know, that's the reality of it. There's there's coaches who never get there. You know, um, there's great coaches that never great coaches who, you know, and, and that's part of your job too, which I think is so cool about coaching, especially at the high school ranks is that you are, if you do your job the right way, you are, you are helping kids, you know, I and mean, they'll, they'll never forget the lessons you taught them. And, you know, that's, that's more important than the wins, but winning's great. As you Joe Alvazano said, winning's hard, but it, it's great. It's, it is. You've been talking about coaches and, and how important coaches are. I went, I went duck hunting a couple of days ago with some high school buddies of mine. Yeah. That we, we all played football together, you know, 
25 years ago. Was Scott's and dad the coach? Scott's, coach Copeland was my coach my freshman year. He left wow. Halton my sophomore year, but okay. yeah, Scott's dad was my, uh, was my coach when I was a freshman. So I went duck hunting the other day with a couple of old high school buddies. Uh, and, you know, we, we started talking about, you know, this and that from high school. And you remember, you remember when we were playing Stephenville and all, oh yeah, man, I got knocked out in that game, you know, all, you know, just kind of just, yeah. You know, not reliving it, but just talking about it, you know, laughing and, and, and stuff like that. And we started talking about one particular coach. His, his name was Coach Carraway. Coach Carraway would probably be in his mid-70s, I guess, at this point. And he was the meanest son of a yeah. bitch. He was the meanest, just like, the guy turned my helmet around several times. He did it to all of us. You know, the face yeah. mask was on the back of your head when he oh, got yeah. done. Um, I had long hair, and uh, he would come up behind me and pick me up by it. You know, and he was a big Big, huge guy, man. He'd throw 225 on and just rep it. Wow. And uh, just the meanest, meanest dude. And he cried at our football banquet. And we were all sitting there laughing about how mean he was. And then Matt goes, man, I really missed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was, was like, the best. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, God, man, I love that dude. You know, he, <laughs> he was awesome. <laughs> the Texas high school football coach. Oh, There's God, a lot of yeah. good ones, man. There's a lot of, uh, I went to school in Lano for a couple of years before my family moved up to Farmer's Branch and I went to Turner and, uh, you know, played eighth and ninth grade football. And I actually got a hold of my head coach from eighth grade and thanked him like, uh, oh, crap, it must've been 30 years later. Mm-hmm. He, he did not remember me. Mm-hmm. I was only there for a couple of years and I was a terrible football player. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, as I told him, I remembered him, and I, th- I think that you know meant something to him. Here's a kid, you know, who just played for him for one year, and um, you know, he made an impact. George, Absolutely. I really know about you playing junior high against your rival Fredericksburg. The Badland Billies about uh, the pie eater guy. That was that coach, Coach Saucier, was talking was, about okay, pie same eater. Guy. Yeah, I was waiting. Same I was guy. waiting on somebody to bring up pie eater. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pie eater, and uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the dude played quarterback and he punted. And he was, you know, we were all, believe it or not, I was a real skinny kid. And he he had to have been 6'3", 240 probably. Pie Eater was huge. And that's why Coach Saucier called him Pie Eater. Cause <laughs> really, but he said he was soft. You know, don't be afraid of Pie Eater. Don't be afraid of Pie Eater. Hit him in the mouth, you know. If he's, and when he punts, he takes forever. He's so lazy back there. Get out and block his punt. And I had a chance to block it, and I was so terrified of pie eater that I just I kind of slowed up, and <laughs> I, I just figured I, I did the math, and I just figured if he kicked me, I was dead. So I did not get anywhere close to pie eater, and got taken out and called the p word, and uh, <laughs> and then my friend Brett Justice blocked two of his punts as the game went on, and we we got the pie eater, and I think we beat him. At Fredericksburg, House of Pain, right? You know, yeah. road game. And uh, I think we beat them. 1970 some odd. Yeah, 79, <laughs> yeah. I guess it was. Yeah. Pie eater. A minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes ago, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you you know, it's funny, man. You, you remember those times? I actually talk about you getting a hold of your old coach. That's probably been eight, nine years ago. Facebook had gotten started. When my wife was an educator, she taught, you know, she was in education for 15 years. And we were, we were talking about teachers that made an impact, you know, because she still has former students that, that she stays in touch with. And you coaches are always, if I was to see, I, I ran into one of my high school coaches not long ago. And uh, I didn't call him Dan and I didn't call him Mr. Whatever. I, oh, hey, coach. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're all, you know, once you're, you're a teacher, coach. you're always Mr. or Mrs. Somebody. Once you're a coach, you're just coach. But yeah. I looked up, actually, I said, I asked my, my wife if she could look up my sixth grade math teacher so I could apologize to him. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. And uh, the guy's name's James Hammond. And I hated math and I hated his class, but I loved him. Yeah. And uh, he was just a great guy. And he, and I was, I was pretty bad student. I was pretty disruptive and I was the class clown and, <laughs> and I, I you were the Gordo could, of your school. I was know? Gord. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about him in a minute too. I was very disruptive and, and uh, I was that guy. And so I asked her to get a hold of him. I said, can you find this guy, James Hammond? He was my sixth grade math teacher. And uh, I wrote him this big, long thing that said, you know, Mr. Hammond, you know, yada, yada, yada. I, I think I turned out all right. You know, I'm in, I'm in music business now. I ended up marrying a teacher, um, ironically enough. And, you know, this and that just wanted to tell you, thank you 
you know, for being a, one of the good ones and, and making an impact in my life and, you know, all this oh, kind cool. of stuff. And, uh, and he wrote me back. He, he, he wrote me back a real nice message. He said, oh, I remember. He said, but we weren't worried about you. He goes, there were kids there we needed to worry about. We weren't worried about you. We knew really? you'd be all right. Yeah. He said, we knew you'd be all so right. You weren't as bad as you remembered. You know, it's yeah. funny. With me, it was a um, counselor. She was not a teacher, but she was, you know, the counselor that you go see to make sure you're staying on, uh, you know, track for graduation and helping you with college entrance and, and all that stuff. And I, you know, I, I loved her. You know, I, I thought she was great with all the kids. All the kids loved her at Turner. And I went back to a this golf tournament a few years ago and I was at a place where I used to work and it was weird how all these feelings just came back to me and I just remembered, I guess my junior year of high school, my grandmother was living with us. Maybe that's what started the whole senior source thing too with me. You know, she was growing old and had cancer and she passed at her house and I'd missed a lot of school because of golf. So I, I just went to school, you know, kind of in a daze, everybody loves their grandmother and I was close to my grandmother and she saw me walking through the hallways and pulled me into the counselor's office and said, are you okay? And I told her what had happened, you know, and just broke down and she, and she said, well, you just stay here. And, you know, I stayed there and did my work from her office all day long. I hadn't thought about that in years. And I told the story on the air and I said her name, Penny Teagarden, and she emailed me and no I kidding. said, yeah. And she goes, man, I, I've, I can't tell you how many people I've heard from that you said that. And and I think that's so cool that you reached out to your fifth grade teacher. Uh, you yeah. should because, yeah, hey, you know, teachers deserve a lot more pay, especially during all this, you God, know. They're, and, they're, they're, man. they're warriors, man. Oh, unbelievable the hours they put in. And yeah. yeah, you should reach back to, especially the one or two or six, you know, that had some sort of influence to where they just reached out and said, hey, you matter, you know, for whatever reason, you matter to me in in, in a way that, you know, maybe he did it with the way he taught the class every day and that's why you liked him or something he said to you, you know? Well, and I just had, I had Rebecca look up the other day and I'm not, I'm not technical. Josh had to come over and set all this stuff uh, for me. I can open the I'm computer impressed, and hit, man. This, this is, hit the this Zoom is... button, but that's, <laughs> that's about it. So I had Rebecca uh, look up my junior year English teacher to reach out to her. She was, and I was a hor- I was a horrible student, George. Yeah, I just I was too. I was not good, and I could write a story, but I, I, I turned in what I thought was one of the best papers I'd ever written, and I got it back, and it looked like she had slit her wrist and, and bled all over it, you know. <laughs> and it was it was just, and she asked me to stay after class. Her name is Kathy Pruitt, and uh, she's retired now. She lives in Red River, New Mexico. I saw a picture of her the other day, and she's just cute little old lady teacher. Yeah, you know. Retired teacher now. Retired, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, she's like 80 now, I guess. Anyway, and she kept me after class and, and I'm sitting there devastated, man. I'm just like, I've got this paper that I thought was just the best paper ever. And she said, I want to talk about this paper. And I'm like, yeah, what was wrong with it? She said, Cody, you're an extremely gifted writer. And nobody had ever said that to me before. She said, you're yeah. an extremely gifted writer. You are very, very talented. And I was like, then what's the problem? She said, well, this word right here, you made that up. That's not a real word. And you, and you used it five times. <laughs> and you see where that comma is at right there? She said, you can't punctuate. Basically, she said, you can't spell and you can't punctuate and you make up your own words. But other than that, you're a really good storyteller. <laughs> <You know? laughs> see, that was an early sign to you, though. That, so, uh, that's what songwriting is. Right? That, was, yeah. you know, that yeah. was the first person to ever, in my opinion, like that. You know, a teacher is telling me, man, you're, you're really good at this. You just can't spell for shit. <laughs> <laughs> Punctuation and spelling are still a problem for me. You know? oh, me too, buddy. I, thank God we got Google. How do you spell that? Or, God, you know, know. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's bad. All right. All right. You brought this guy in. We can sit here and talk all day, but I, I don't want to keep I'm you. I'm good, man. But however, I tell however you, long you want to go. We, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to ask you. One of them being, what's it like? to work with Gordon Keith every day? Well, it's an experience. Um, sometimes you sit back and marvel at his brilliance. And sometimes you want to walk across the room and just slowly strangle him and, <laughs> and, and all the life out of it. You know, I really used to feel that way like 20 years ago. I, we, you know, had our battles and everything. We get along fine now. You know, some of the on-air stuff is just, 
me and him, you know, going at each other. He's a really interesting guy. He, he seriously is one of one of the smartest guys I've ever known. And going back to school, it didn't, he, he was that class clown that cut up, you know, mm-hmm. who didn't really apply himself, didn't get his college degree. But when he got out of high school, he read a lot and read about the things that he was interested in. And if you had a question, you'd read about it. And you can ask him just about anything from history to how do you wire a house? And he'll have a good 10 minutes for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, on something. Yeah. He's one of those uh, kind of Renaissance dudes, you know, who can do a lot of different things. He's a hell of a musician. He's an incredible guitar player. I say he should do more with it, but I, I think he's done a lot with it in the last, you know, few years. He's played Jub Jam. He comes out and plays and... Mm-hmm. Uh, he has like this weird thing of, he, as he said, I, I helped him get out and perform again. He used to play in bands in high school and uh, when he was just out of high school, played in like, you know, some very Duran Duran Smiths sounding bands, you know. But yeah, he is he is one brilliant dude and he's got a real kind side that you rarely, really get a, a peek at, but he really is. Yeah, G- Gordon may be my favorite you know, guy, guy on your show, just because he is, you know, you've, you've got you and, and Craig, who's seems really buttoned up and then you just smash him in the face with Gordon <laughs> comes in, <laughs> snipes people, you know, and, and it, it's a, it's a really great comic relief sometimes. To, oh yeah. You know, to, to have him in there. And, and he's uh, hilarious. He says some oh, of the funniest goodness. things that, and just thinks about things that no other human does. There's just no way, you know, and it can be something really mundane about, you know, like one time we did 15 minutes on weird things that happened in the kitchen and we got on things like bent spoon and, you know, <laughs> panic fork or, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know, just uh, weird things like that. And then, you know, of course, you know, if you're talking about human behavior, you know, he's got uh, a really funny anecdote. I mean, he's, he's incredible. It, when he pisses Norm off, that's the funniest. Like, cause, you know, oh man, it's so I was listening sometimes. the day that Norm went off. And he's like, you have got to be one of the <laughs> smartest people up here. You know, and he's like, he just went <laughs> off on like, but you just like need to shut the hell up, you know? <laughs> and, and, and now y'all saved it and y'all use it as a drop and it's pissed oh, yeah. off Norm. Poor Norm. And, 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 <laughs> it Every moment that Norm has been mad at something or someone or has said, you know, just anything, it just gets taken as a drop and yeah isn't, yeah isn't that weird though to have everything when you're working documented in, in that kind of yeah. a weird way to to live and yes yeah you know and be reminded of it constantly. yes yes from the guy who interrupted the moment of silence nationwide in 2001 <laughs> uh, paul in yeah 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 we know I mean, that <laughs> I, I swear i just i just wanted to die that day i really did i mean i just felt like Am I, I really thought that am I going to get fired? Does someone think that I did this as like a, a prank? And, oh, and, just, I, and I just, oh. and you know, I, of course I didn't get a lot of support from the two bozos I work with. <laughs> They're just like, oh, okay, well now's the moment of silence. All right. And I, so it, it makes no sense now, but at the time we were like, knowing the awkwardness that was ahead, we said, how are we going to do this? And we decided when the moment of silence is over, Let's let it pause for a little bit, and then let's just go straight to calls. Because what are you going to say? Well, that was the moment of silence, some 15 seconds. I mean, what are you going to yeah. say? So we all said, okay. And so actually going to Paul in, uh, I think he was in Plano, and I never even got that part out. That was the play we were supposed to run. I ran the right play. I just... You jumped the snap. I ran it on one, not two. Yeah, I just... Yeah. A total <laughs> false started. And, I don't know. And, and part of it was, I really was, I was trying to be like everyone listening at the time. And I just, I had my eyes closed and I had my head down. And then I just heard the voice stop, you know, back when we had Doc doing our voicers mm-hmm. and all, and I did not even hear what he said. I just heard his voice stopped. So I thought that was the end. That was your So cue. that's why I went to Paul and, and when I said, when I start talking, they both reared up like, you know, prairie dogs, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then I just realized, oh, wow, this is the moment of sight. You know, so I just, I didn't say anything. And, oh, yeah, terrible. Uh, Paul, uh, and, uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> but you wouldn't have gotten that. You, dude, y'all gotten so much mileage oh, out of that Oh, my drop. gosh. Yeah, it's, it's fine now. But, like, yeah, at the time, <laughs> I just thought it was the end of the world, you know, oh, or Lord. my career or something. 
Oh, uh, yeah, the one that killed me on now is uh, when I tried to take a swipe at Rapper's Delight. After school, I put my dick in the pool. The one that killed me with now. <laughs> well, George, I was there for when you did that the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's where you did. You just like fall on the oh, floor. Oh, I fell like, out. Idiot! What's he doing? <laughs> God, Napoleon! Idiot! Oh my goodness! Oh, idiot. it's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. But that's and that's like what Josh said, man. That goes back to everything that you do. Like now, every show we do, be it on stage or be it a podcast or whatever, is recorded. Yeah. But there aren't millions of people listening to the recorded playbacks. We're not broadcasting. Yeah. We record it and save it. like, And then week. highlighting when you... And then highlight the really good <laughs> stuff. You guys highlight the e-break of the week, which is like one of my favorite. And you, yeah. you know, you do that. So That is such a weird twist on radio. You know, take your most... The moments you don't want to relive and go ahead and, I don't know, play it five times on Friday morning. Let's have That's, everybody vote on it. <laughs> yeah, let's vote on it. I can tell you right now that <laughs> that is why people love y'all and because of the human element and you can laugh at yourselves. And if you yeah. can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at anybody else. So you, better, right. start, you better start with yourself. And uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it, anyway, it's a, it's a great segment, man. And man, like I said, I could, we could sit here and, and jibber jabber all day, but, um, you know, have you been right, by the way, have you been writing? I've been writing a shitload, man. Good. Um, man, I tell you what, dude, something cool. I actually, uh, I have a friend of mine named Kendall Marvel. He's written a bunch of stuff like Gary Allen and George yeah. Strait, and, you know, just, just a fantastic songwriter. And there's a, a songwriter that by the name of Jim Lauderdale that I'm a really, really big fan of. Everybody's cut Jim songs. He's mm-hmm. just he's one of those guys. Like, oh, that's his song too. Oh, well, he wrote that. You know, <laughs> he's one of those dudes. I got to write with him the other day. Oh, cool. And as opposed, it was a it was a three way ride. It was me and Kendall and Jim. We set up a Zoom meeting, kind of like we're doing now. Yeah, man, it just made my day because like I'm writing with you know one of my heroes that you know I've been singing this guy's song since I was a kid. You know, he's he's sixty. He's in his early sixties now. You know, there's a there's saying in the business: you never meet your heroes. Yeah, because you know it's it's easy to be let down. He was as cool and as awesome. That's great. And, and he wasn't the listen here, young man. Uh, yeah, I've got more awards than you'll ever dream of. I've yeah. written more hits than you've taken shits. You know, it's <laughs> it's it, one of those <laughs> one of those guys. And and I just found him so cool to write with. You know, because he'd be like. You know, because like I would kind of defer, like somebody would have an idea and I'd wait to see what Jim was going to say. Yeah. And then he'd be like, all right, man, I have this idea. It's kind of far out. If you guys don't <laughs> like it, y'all just let me know. You know, the complete antithesis to the yeah. guy that says, well, hey, this is what it needs to be. And the alliteration needs to work like this, you know, yada, yada, yeah. yada. So to answer your question, long, long winded. Yeah, man, we've been, we've been writing a ton, man. The, the songwriters great. have nothing to do but write. I can't wait to hear it. One of these times we need to write one together. It, you need to come out. Man. I will warn you. It's like uh, writing with a kindergartner, but. Hey, you know what, buddy? I can fake my way through it. They tell you in the business that you need to write at an eighth grade level. And I try to write at least on a 10th grade level. So you're going to have to step your game <laughs> well, up. Well, you okay? do. <laughs> I will. I will. You got you to gotta, you gotta bring it. But well, what we need to do, man, you know, is, is I know that you hunt out my yeah. way quite a bit and i know and, uh, we're gonna do that for sure yeah need to i got a buddy that'll set some birds for us i bring my dog up and watch them run around and brother i hunt two or three times a week so do you really you you, you say when okay yeah you've I'm been bird hunting up there buddy. or you've been oh, yeah. deer hunting yeah we've been we've been popping ducks oh nice we shot okay. 20 we shot 22 ducks the morning before yesterday you have a dog with you nope my really? dog, my dog is being trained right now. What kind? Black lab. Nice. Yeah. I got a silver and a yellow. Yeah. The yellow is gun shy. The silver is a really good hunter. Yeah. I haven't taken him duck hunting, but his trainer has. Yeah. We've taken him out on pheasant and bird and uh, quail, you know, but um, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's go do that. That'd be fun. Me and, me and Josh and Keith, we went five days. We went two days goose hunting up in uh, Oklahoma. Whoa. And then and then we came home and jumped on my tour bus and went to Missouri overnight to make a morning hunt up there. So we're, we're pretty serious about it. We'll get on the bus and go somewhere if you want to. Oh, I am so in on that. <laughs> Hunting and a bus. Are you kidding me? 
We'll do some tour, like Tales from the Tour Bus stuff, oh, man. man yeah, that would be so great. Yeah, I'm we'll so in on that. that. Well, and, and like you were talking about coaches and stuff a while ago, we went with uh, Steve Rodriguez. He's Baylor's head baseball coach. Yeah. He, uh, it was me and Josh and, and Coach Rod and uh, and Bobby Keith and down from the bus. That's a guy you need to, sorry to tell you how to do your own show. No, That's I need all the help. <laughs> Is he a good? I know who he is. I don't know him personally, but I know certainly who he is. Yeah, he is a good man. He is. He is a good. Would be a great interview. Absolutely, good man. Okay, we we we've, we've yeah. had him on the podcast. We had uh, we had Banny. Uh, oh yeah, Bannister is a fan of ours, and he loves music. Yeah, yeah. And, and likewise of him. Uh, actually, Chris Hennessy. Chris Hennessy called me this morning, Josh. No kidding. Just out of the blue. Wow. Chris knows Banny too, because Chris plays with Jamie Johnson, and they were up last year. Whenever um, Banny was working for Pittsburgh again, okay, they went out to do BP or something, and Chris and Banny got to talking and took a picture. Oh, no kidding. So anyway, yeah, Chris, oh, wow. Chris called me this morning. It was nice, fun. but anyway, having the coaches on those, I love love talking with those guys. Um, oh yeah, you know the the they're. I love the philosophy of being a leader and and trying to learn to be a a better leader, a more effective leader, you know, somebody that commands respect, but does the grunt work. Too. You know, so I'm not going to ask you to do anything I hadn't done or won't do, you know, sure. those type of guys. I, I, I love. Oh, I'm fascinated by coaching. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The psychology of it is, is awesome, but nevertheless. All right. So um, we have this segment called, why do I know this? And this is really where you, you thought you were going to get it off with a, a fluff oh, no. a fluff piece today, but <laughs> All right. we're about to grill you, George. Okay, let's do All it. Right. All right, boys, take it away. All right, go ahead there, Bobby Keith. All right, favorite 2 a.m. meal. 2 a.m. meal. Um, there was a place in Austin. Y'all remember Katz's? I think they closed. They're saying was Katz never closes, but it used to be open... 24 hours. Now that that is closed, I gotta say Waffle House. <laughs> you can't go wrong, That's buddy. a good go-to. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Morning person or night owl. Oh, oh my uh, God. He hosts a morning show, dude. <laughs> you know what's weird about that? I'd almost say neither. I Like, this is my time of day. You know, afternoon, I, I, I catch hell here for going to bed too early, and then I catch hell at work for Come on, man, wake up. We, we're doing a morning show. And I'm just like, God, even after 20 some odd years, I'm still not a morning person. I'm, I guess I would take night owl over morning. That's ironic. Yeah. But usually I'm yeah. too tired to stay out too late. <laughs> <laughs> Last one is a favorite video game, past or present. <sighs> mm. I played with, uh, you know, the, the games that my kids would play like Madden. NCAA football. That was the best. Oh man, I wish they'd bring that back. Because they called it NCAA dub. Yeah, that was yeah, that's the best. The uh, the college football game that they stopped for licensing reasons. I think that was the best. Yeah. And Kirk Herb Street and Lee Corso on the call. Oh yeah. It was oh. I mean at the time, I mean now the graphics probably wouldn't match up, but that was the other thing bragging on my son again when he played at North Texas, he was on the game and he was a backup linebacker and uh and deep snapper but you know we we would of course play the game and uh play north texas and get him on the field you know he was a that's starter cool. when we would play I've never yeah, been that on a video cool. game that's badass <laughs> i know yeah, awesome. i know and they thought it was cool too they, they never thought you know two things about it but then that lawsuit was brought up and I don't think they've all they've settled it, but I don't think they've paid the former athletes. I think he's got like four or five thousand dollars coming to him. No kidding. All these former college football wow. players do. Yeah, if you played from like whenever that game was huge, what was it like? Oh, seven to eleven or something 12, like that. Yeah, yeah twelve like that. maybe. Um, then you are eligible for this payment, and I, I don't think they've made it just yet. But um, yeah. That's a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. You're talking, you know, yeah. 80 kids on a team and you got 130 division one programs. And that's a bunch. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of kids. All right, Josh. George, do you believe in ghosts? Yes. I can't say that I've seen one, but I don't doubt the stories. Gotcha. What's your favorite music venue to, to go see a show at? How about the Kessler? Y'all played there? Never have. Oh, man. I've never even been there. I'd like to go. I've heard nothing but good things. I mean, I've been to shows at what the Kessler used to be. 
I yeah. think, if I'm thinking of the right place. Kessler but, Theater down there, um, yeah. Arts District. Um, we had Jub Jam there from like the second year to the seventh year, like the year before you came and played when we had it back at Gillies. Um, so y'all know who Kim Ritchie is? You know who Kim Ritchie is. She mm-hmm. co-wrote uh, Nobody Wins with Radney Foster. And anyway, she had a solo career. She is my favorite female artist. And I saw her once at the Kessler and it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard musically. Awesome. And to wrap it up, uh, do you have a stupid human trick? Yeah. And I don't think I can do it anymore. I can still kind oh, of do it. Yeah. You that did, thing. Th- yeah. I mean, th- that you, was a big whip thing. Back this in index high finger. Yep, yep. I used to be able to. Hold on. And like you're packing a can of snuff. Yep. That was it. Yeah. 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 Was, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I learned how to do it. I like spoons. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not as loud as it used to be. I could really make that thing snap. Um, but yeah. You'd hold that can of snuff and hit yeah, your hand. I remember, yeah, I remember back whenever we thought we were cool, you know, and we were like teenagers and we'd, we'd get a can of snuff and we'd, oh, yeah. that, you know, pack that can of snuff down. Yeah. And then I spent the next 20 years trying to get off of it. I know. I tried to, <laughs> man, when, when you live in Lano, you, you dip to be cool. I tried, but I got, I'm, I'm such a wimp. I got sick. And it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because I never got hooked well, on it. You never had a problem with it. Hell, I, dude, I, I just quit it last year. It, it's hard to quit, isn't it? It took a it took a long it took a long I know. time. I know. But okay. All right. Well, I had uh I had one more question for you. Hit me. Just this is just, you know, out of personal curiosity and just you have got to interview like you're friends with like Troy Aikman and like really rad people and you get to talk to them on a regular basis and stuff like that. You've been doing this for a long time. You're very, very good at it. I love, I love listening to you interview people. Thank you, Cody. Who has been your absolute, like, write it down right now. This was my favorite interview ever. Um, who, who would that be? That's a really good Danny one. White. Danny White. <laughs> most underrated quarterback in Cowboys history. Also used to punt <laughs> back when quarterbacks yes. like Sammy Ball yes. and Danny White used to have to punt. And too, occasionally yeah. just take off with it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, George. Um, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, Danny White's a, that's a good one. I did think about Tom Landry. My youngest son's middle name is Landry. I'm an old school Cowboys fan. So, um, you know, I loved Coach Landry and we had him on the show several times. But I think the the most, you know, the holy shit moment was um, the the former president, George, uh, George W. Um, that was just, it's the only president, I guess, that I've talked. We talked to Jimmy Carter, too. We had him on the phone. But this, uh, twice, we went to the library once and did an interview with him. And then he had us down because Craig's a cyclist. He does that, um, that big mountain bike uh, rally with uh, the injured troops. Mm-hmm. And um, down in Crawford, and he had us down, and we spent the day there. Craig rode. Gordo and I rode around in a four-wheeler. <laughs> 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 and we're, like, going off sweet jumps and stuff and, um, and watched the race. And then afterwards, we got the interview. Um, George, and uh, he called me Big George. Uh, Big George. <laughs> hey, Big George. I, I can see him Big doing George. his hey, you Big George. Yeah, you're Big George. Yeah. <laughs> That would be awesome. And that was cool. You know, I don't, there's some people, you know, you, you can't even mention a politician on either side now without someone, you know, oh blowing their chest up. And I, I, I don't care enough to, oh, yeah. to do that. I mean, I'll say both Jimmy Carter. Uh, by the way, watch that show on CNN about Jimmy Carter and his musical influence and all the musicians that he befriended. Well, he was big friends with... Uh, with Willie. Willie, yeah. They show footage of that. Uh, Willie smoked weed on top of the White House. On top House. of the White House, yeah. <laughs> During Carter's and, and he administration. Was, yeah, and he was there at uh, these like really significant talks at Camp David. And I think Carter was like going back and forth from the White House to Camp David. But the Allman Brothers, I mean, he was friends with a lot of different uh, musicians and bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just cool, you know. I mean, it's, it's the president, you know, and it's the world's most important job. Doesn't get much bigger than the leader of the free world. No, heck no. So, yeah, I'd have to say those two, uh, Jimmy Carter and um, and President Bush. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd have to say those are two pretty good answers there, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. And, and, and being on the uh, a couple in 
podcast. <laughs> Those are, hey, we don't even have Those sponsors, man. Uh, well, Y'all need to get some. Oh, you know, we're, we're, we, we, we talking to a couple different people, but you know, it, it, we just do it because we like doing it. It gives us something to do. <laughs> Sure. We, yeah. We don't have a whole bunch to do these days. So we get to, we call up our rad friends and we're like, hey, <laughs> you want to, you we wanna, don't really even know if anybody listens, but we <laughs> would like to do it. I don't even know. Like, this is how much I don't care that people listen. I don't know how many people listen. We've been, we're really? on our, we're fifth, fifth or sixth. Seth six, doesn't keep track of that. I don't know. Seth might. Do, do you keep track of that stuff, Seth? Not at all. Don't care. Make it sound good. Not send it. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Seth yeah. doesn't care. I mean, yeah, we, uh, he just, he just fixes weird pauses and breaks and stuff like that. And then, you okay. know, it's, it's off, it's off to the press, but I actually know. just want to make sure Seth was not asleep that I'd put him to sleep. I just want to make <laughs> well, sure. He normally, actually, I think you're the first person he's actually jumped on and said something. He normally doesn't say anything. We'll talk to really? him. Okay. I'll, I'll take that him. as uh yeah, I'll but take yeah, that normally as he just, there. Okay. He just, uh, he just sits over there being quiet, you know, <laughs> making, making sure he can dump something if he needs to. <laughs> what editing's for. But hey, man. Yeah, you need advertisers. You need sponsors, man. We do. We do. But, uh, you know, and actually, what's funny about this whole thing is that we've gotten a whole lot more professional with it. Yeah. We've actually started taking it seriously. The first season, we really didn't take that serious. It was kind of, <laughs> we started calling it a couple in because we were on the road and we were interviewing our friends. So we easily hit, Two or the, three in. Yeah. hit, the, hit the left-hander <laughs> and, uh, you know, drink a couple of Colons and, you know, talk shop. And then we started getting like big guests that is like, holy shit, I can't believe that guy said yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're a big deal now. You are a big deal. I got to start taking this stuff seriously, man. You run in high circles with Clint Black and people like that. <laughs> Yeah, man, I just I just try not to say something stupid. That's all I try to do. That's how I go through life. That's what I do every day, and I, I fail miserably every day. Uh, well, <laughs> you're doing something right. You've been doing it a long time, and uh, and buddy, I, I thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time. And thank you. Uh, not not just you being a part of our lives as as uh, somebody that we listen to on a daily basis and keeps us going, but you know, as a as a good dude, man, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, you know, all around good dude. Just thank you for your friendship. Thank you, Cody. Yeah, thank you, man. Our our, our friendship means a lot to me. And like I said, there's a lot of people who don't believe that I know you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> you know, they just think I'm way too uncool to know you. And yeah, I know Cody. I mean, I could even call him right now. You couldn't call Cody. Yeah, I could. I'm not going to bug him You're right. just to appease you <laughs> to wonder if I really know him. But. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, George. I've called you before because I told somebody I could. That's so. I'm, you called me. <laughs> yeah. You called me somewhere just dying laughing one day. Where I don't remember, you? but you I, I told somebody I you could. You were hammered and you were, <laughs> I can't remember who you were with. I was like, yeah, of course I know Cody. He's awesome. And I can't remember. It was somebody that I was like, wow, you're hanging. I can't. I don't know where you were. You were out somewhere out on the road. I got drunk and said, hey, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny conversation, though. It really was funny because you were dying laughing. Oh, man. Just about everything I said. So uh, it must we have, have, been a, good we have a good time. But seriously, man, <laughs> give me a holler. and, and uh, I will. Let's go uh, chase some birds. I said duck season's almost over. We need to get you out in a layout blind. Go, go pop some ducks, man. It'll change your life. I promise. You know, I've hunted uh, a lot of quail. I've never hunted ducks. You ask these guys, dude. It ain't nothing like it. Yeah. It's fun. It's a good time. I'm a terrible shot, though. I suck. That's why it's good. They're big. They're giant birds. Yeah. I went about three weeks ago, and I was like three out of 20. That's why you take a couple boxes of shit. Oklahoma quail love me because I, I can't hit them. <laughs> yeah. They just take a lot of shells, man. I know. Yeah. That's, that's Out all ammo them. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to A Couple In with Cody Jinks, Josh Thompson out of Boyd, Texas. Thank you, sir. Thank you, buddy. Been a lot of fun today. Bobby Keith Kilgore. Thank you. Had a good today from Austin. <laughs> the house you built, sir. Hey, before we uh, let our guests go, Keith, tell George who you thought we had today. Oh, man, I was doing my research. I thought you were Jeff Dunham. A ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot, you know, like... And I, it's weird. I do have a cousin named Jeff, Jeff Dunham, who I haven't seen in a long time. He's a doctor in Minnesota. He's not a ventriloquist. Uh, 
<laughs> You're not the first. There's a lot right of people who say, yeah. That's, that's what okay. we were giggling about when you when you logged on earlier. That's what we were laughing about. I was just going to kind of go with it and see, like, man, you're not that guy I looked at. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. a goofy MFer, but you're not Jeff Dunham. No. <laughs> well, that's a good way to end it. So for you yeah. guys listening to a couple in, it's me, Cody Jinks, Josh Thompson, Bobby Keith Gilgore, and then out of Nashville, Tennessee, we got Seth Nose Noseworthy turning the knobs, and our guest today has been George Dunham. Way to go, Seth. Reese, good job. Yeah, yeah, good job, Reese. <laughs> so, hey, buddy, uh, once again, thank you so much. And uh, if you thank need you. anything, give me a holler. Whether, whether, uh, we'll do. We'll go raise some money for charity or we'll go hunt and we'll do something. And I'd love either one. All right, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. See you guys.